You know, in the pantheon of Doctor Who writers, whom has the most discourse surrounding them? Stephen Moffat? Chris Chibnall? Russell T Davies? Robert Holmes? Terence Dix? Maybe even Terry Nation? I could talk about those. Or we could talk about someone who no one has thought about in years, like Louis Marx. Louis Marx wrote four scripts for the classic run of Doctor Who, across three different periods of the show. The first, Planet of Giants, was written for William Hartnell's first Doctor, under the reign of producer Verity Lambert, and was broadcast as the opener for the show's second season in 1964. The second, Day of the Daleks, was another opener, this time for the show's ninth season in 1972, helmed by producer Barry Letts and written for John Pertwee's third Doctor. The other two, 1975's Planet of Evil and 1976's The Mask of Mandragora, were penned for Philip Hinchcliffe's reign as producer and released as the sophomore story of the 13th and opening story of the 14th seasons respectively, both starring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. You know, it's interesting to me how Louis Marx's output as a writer tends to be as overlooked and, I dare say, half forgotten as it is, because looking at his four stories, he surprisingly varied both creatively and tonally. Planet of Giants is literally one of the smallest scale adventures in the entire show, where the Doctor and friends get miniaturised to the size of an inch and have to run around a lab to prevent the mass production of an insecticide. The main conflict is resolved when the shrunken Doctor's mildly inconvenient shenanigans have called the attention of a constable, who puts a stop to the whole operation. Pretty comfy and honestly inconsequential sounding stuff. In fact, so inconsequential that the higher ups cut it down from the originally intended four episode format to a mere three-parter because they felt it was too languid. And yet, conversely, Planet of Evil is a dark, oppressively atmospheric Lovecraftian horror tale set on the edge of the known universe, detailing the attacks of a mysterious unknown antimatter force on a mineral expedition. There's almost no levity, there's an extremely isolated tone, and some parts of the story are downright psychological. The antimatter force in question isn't even really defeated at the end. The Doctor just returns the minerals taken by the expedition to it, and leaves, with the creature ominously watching the departure of the TARDIS. That's actually a pretty chilling moment when you think about it. These two stories are almost as tonally different as it's possible to get, and yet both fit pretty snugly into the respective feels of their home eras. Lambert's tenure was more focused on the spirit of adventure and had a more carefree, happy-go-lucky vibe about it, which Planet of Giants matches rather well. While the Hinchcliffe era is famous, and infamous, for its hammer horror influences and darker tone, which Planet of Evil is pretty much the embodiment of. This indicates that Louis Marx as a writer was pretty flexible and able to meet the desired creative directions of the producers he was working under with ease. Even in terms of plot structure, Marx proved himself to be surprisingly creative. Take Day of the Daleks, where the main conflict centres around a causal loop. 22nd century Earth is in ruins after a catastrophic Third World War, which has allowed the Daleks to invade and enslave humanity. And a band of human resistance fighters identify the destruction of a 20th century peace conference as the initial event that led humanity down this dark path in the first place. They erroneously identify politician Sir Reginald Stiles as the culprit, and plan to go back in time and assassinate him before his apparent suicide attack that they think sends the world into chaos. And yet, it turns out the destruction of the peace conference was the freedom fighters doing in the first place. In a last desperate attempt to change the future, they inadvertently caused the very events that they came back to prevent. A temporal paradox. Of course, in retrospect, this isn't particularly mind-blowing, as nowadays such time travel problems are pretty commonplace in Doctor Who. But at this point in the show's history, this was actually an incredibly ambitious and rarely done narrative structure, and it stands out among its kin. And while not a pure historical by any means, The Mask of Mandragora certainly shows that Marx was perfectly capable of competently scripting period settings, dialogue, characters, etc. And hey, a historical outing in the Fourth Doctor era, let alone the 70s as a whole, is also a surprisingly rare occurrence. 
As a writer for Doctor Who, Louis Marx did a lot to stand out. So what is fandom's general consensus on his work, as well as my own personal thoughts on all four of his stories? From my own humble perspective, Marx's overall output seems to be just there for the general Doctor Who fandom. Like, I don't think I've ever seen any significant amount of dislike targeted towards any of his stories, but at the same time I've never seen any of them largely heralded as all-time greats or fan favourites either. In the 2014 Doctor Who magazine poll, his four stories were very sporadic across the final results, with Planet of Giants coming as low as 214 out of all 241 entries, and yet Day of the Daleks coming to rest at a fairly respectable 65th place. Both Planet of Evil and The Mask of Mandragora came out around the middle of the list. As for me, I personally feel like Planet of Giants is incredibly underrated. Like, sure it's not exactly the most groundbreaking story in the world, but it's certainly charming and adorable and it's in my top 10 first Doctor stories. Link in the description. But I've known some other fans call it dull. I suppose I can see why. Removing the circumstantial element of the TARDIS crew being shrunk, the main conflict is probably one of the most mundane of any Doctor Who story, with no alien menace or historical villain in sight, as is the case for pretty much all other first Doctor stories. The fact that it's sitting right next to iconic post-apocalyptic Dalek story and first ever companion departure the Dalek invasion of Earth probably doesn't help either. The Mask of Mandragora suffers from similarly distracting placement, being the fairly decent but not really that memorable penultimate story for iconic companion Sarah Jane Smith, before she left in the following more exciting adventure The Hand of Fear. Oh it's still fine on its own merits, don't get me wrong, but I do agree that it just lacks… something. Same for Planet of Evil, like I really admire the sense of dread and strong cosmic sense of the unknown that it's going for, and it's still really good, but it's just missing a certain quality to make it an all-time top tier classic for me. Then again, it is also stacked alongside some extremely popular other stories in a very tightly packed season, being firmly wedged between two Doctor Who magazine top 15 choices, Terror of the Zygons and Pyramids of Mars. And with The Brain of Morbius and The Seeds of Doom also in the same run? Yeah, that's some very, very strong competition. Wait, I've got it. All of those other stories have pretty strong and memorable supporting characters, while Planet of Evil… Uh, doesn't really. Maybe that's the quality it's missing. In fact, that's kind of the case for all of Marx's stories. Like, the supporting characters aren't as particularly compelling as they could be, and I can't pin down why. Day of the Daleks comes the closest to getting over this hurdle, with the controller being an interestingly conflicted individual, played near immaculately by Aubrey Woods. But um, yeah, I can't remember the names of any of the military in Planet of Evil without researching them first, and Professor Sorensen could be a bit more fleshed out. Forrester and Smithers in Planet of Giants are relatively serviceable, but the lack of direct interaction with any of the regulars is probably what's holding them back. The only thing I really remember about the cast of The Mask of Mandragora is that, uh, this guy kind of looks like Peter Capaldi. And that's kind of it. Marx did find villain-wise though, in all fairness. As I said, the antimatter creature in Planet of Evil is effectively spooky and unknowable, and that does help to strengthen the mystique of the Doctor Who universe. The Daleks don't particularly do that much in Day of the Daleks. But this was the first story to feature the Ogrons, and hey, I like them. They're fun mercenaries. The Mandragora Helix is delightfully hammy. Forrester from Planet of Giants is also pretty funny, because hot damn is he terrible at not acting suspicious. So uh, yeah, that's my analysis of Louis Marx's contributions to Doctor Who. I think he was a pretty decent writer, all things considered. And I do really enjoy all of his stories. In terms of plot, tone and style, he was quite creative and impressively diverse, and he was certainly capable of writing some true gems. I just think the issue is that all of his stories are surrounded by other, more fondly remembered classic stories, which all feature far more compelling character work or iconic moments that kind of take away attention from his scripts, and that's prevented him from becoming a household name like, say, Robert Holmes or Terry Nation. Still, no shame in that. He still did good, and it's fun to root for the underdog. Then again, don't think I didn't notice that he skipped the second Doctor. Maybe that's why he never made it into the big leagues with Terence Dix and Malcolm Hulk. If he'd written for Patrick Troughton, maybe we'd be singing his praises from the rooftops, but that's none of my business. Yeah!